vegan diet, keto diet, intermittent fasting, and the snake diet. We're gonna go all in on fad diets in this video. Let's go. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian Acosta of ShredderForLife.com. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, dropping that first like, Drop in that first comment, go ahead and subscribe to this man right here as well, Mr. Paul Ravella. Today, we're gonna talk about fad diets. We're not gonna be hating on them though. So if you came here to bask in the hate, another video will be best suited for you. Don't fuck with people in real life. You have to fuck with people on the internet because we'll fucking take you out. Come find me, y'all know I'm in Morgantown, West Virginia. We're just gonna jive on these subjects while they may be great, but they may not be for everyone. The vegan diet. So the vegan diet is actually not a diet, it's actually a philosophy of eating that kind of revolves around a few things. Most of the variables are kind of related to either digestion or the ethics of killing animals for food. Mm -hmm. So you can be a vegan and still be a flexible dieter. I actually coach people to compete in the IFBB Pro League as vegans. Is there an issue? No, as long as you're taking the time to kind of figure out the solution for your problem. How do you get a lot of protein without getting a lot? of other macronutrients. So mm -hmm. a vegan diet, I don't consider it a fad. I think it's, it's more of a lifestyle as I think a lot of this is gonna come down to. I agree, I agree. So vegan diet and two of these diets I've personally tried myself and I'm gonna echo that as well. I know many individuals who are vegan. One individual has been lifetime, uh, Nimai Delgado, not lifetime vegan, never eaten meat. He was vegetarian uh, and I'll have him on the screen and looks phenomenal. You can maintain muscle, grow muscle on a vegan diet. The only thing there, and coming from someone who I've I've cut out meat and dairy for a six month period, so from experience, I know that for myself personally, it's not sustainable, which is yeah. something we're gonna touch on at the end, but, but it's very much possible for this to be a lifestyle, whether it's because of ethics or, or other reasons for people. And as you highlighted, Paul, you know many very successful individuals in the fitness space who maintain a vegan diet. So uh, if you are going to practice the vegan diet, again, we're gonna tie this to the end because you feel it's gonna give you some specific health benefit that you can't get from somewhere else, may not be the case. And if you're gonna do it specifically just for fat loss and muscle gain, uh, that can be achieved through many other uh, manners. So let's get into number two. We're gonna cover the keto diet. So keto diet, Paul, from my understanding, is essentially very low carbohydrate, around 30, 35 so, grams so of So this is, this is kind of the misconception around a ketogenic diet. A ketogenic diet is not a diet that is low carb. It is essentially zero net carbs, where you don't want any carbs impacting blood sugar because you're switching your body's fuel source from glucose to ketone bodies. And when that happens, some very powerful things happen. So it's more of a metabolic therapy. It's a lifestyle a lot of people associate with a low carb approach to dieting. The real issue there is if you're not actually in a state of nutritional ketosis where your fats are high enough, protein and carbs are low enough, you will just kind of be in the middle. You will be operating both on glucose and on ketones intermittently and you'll feel like crap. And they call that the keto flu when you're actually going into ketosis. Nutritional ketosis is actually 75 80% of your total calories coming from fats. Mm -hmm. like, drink that in for a second. That's a lot of nutritional fat that you have to take in on a given day. A lot of people kickstart a keto diet by fasting because you can get into ketosis quicker. Mm -hmm. They even have some, some salts now that help you get into ketosis quicker. So a ketogenic diet is basically a metabolic therapy. It's also a way of dieting that can be sustainable for some people. Why? Mm -hmm. Because you're eliminating whole food groups and you learn how to eat in a new lifestyle manner. Mm -hmm. and, and I find that interesting, Paul, what you just shared is, and maybe this may be interesting for you guys is, Hey, while it is associated with being very low carb, there's an individual I know, a good friend named Ruben. I'll throw him on the screen. He uh, he has around 200 grams of carbs per day and is still able to maintain ketosis, primary fuel source okay, being so ketone. Ketosis is actually very dynamic. You can adapt to it over time. And so Dr. Dominic Diagostino out of the University of South Florida, he's been doing it for over a decade. He's actually kind of doing a high protein hybrid. So he brought his protein back up does have carbohydrates around his training and still stays in ketosis, but his body is so well adapted to it that it's 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 better for him. Mm -hmm. So, end of the day, same conclusion as practicing the vegan lifestyle is you can totally lose fat on it, but it's not the way. So, individuals watching this video like the keto diet, gotta do it because my friend's doing it and, and he's seeing results or she's seeing results. It's not, uh, it's not the glory, like it's not the only way. So number three we're gonna jive on really quick is the intermittent fasting dieting approach. Now this isn't even a specific diet, so to speak. So 
What's your experience on? So intermittent fasting is, is a philosophy where you basically only eat during a certain window of the day. Now the benefit of this is a lot of our habits and rituals are based around eating. So if you just change the manner in which you eat, you can often lose weight because you're just eliminating an entire group of meals from your day. Mm -hmm. What they claim is the benefit is the hormones that happen. Oh, I mean, my, my, my hormones are better because I'm fasting. No, your hormones are still actually the same. Those are acute changes. They're not long-term changes. So what you still need to do is create a caloric deficit to lose weight, okay? There is no muscle sparing benefit to fasting versus eating meals throughout the day, as long as you're doing things the right way. So sure. fasting, in my mind, is a wonderful approach for many people. A lot of people claim they don't like to eat breakfast, they don't like to eat at night. If that works for you, great. The only issue I have when, when people talk about fasting is that there is some magical benefit because you are not eating for long periods of time. We all fast. It's called sleeping. That's why it's <laughs> breakfast. We're breaking our fast. Hopefully, I'm blow just minds right there. Right. Uh, it's, it is interesting with intermittent fasting. A lot of individuals think it's a specific diet protocol. It's like, hey, you can have one diet and, you know, and then practice intermittent fasting, eating the same exact foods, the same amount of calories, uh, same macronutrient profiles. It's just shifting, like you said, Paul, the times that you are going to be eating your meals. Personally, being someone who has practiced, practiced intermittent fasting, uh, I've done quite frequently the eight hour fast uh, eating and then 16 hour fasting window. Yep. So, and that this is very common, starting eating at noon and then wrapping up eating for the day at 8 p.m. And then I've also gone as long as eating, uh, not eating for 72 hours, three days. And what I personally found with intermittent fasting is it was a benefit to my life to practice the willpower uh, of not eating during times when I was hungry. Right. And I think that's very powerful, overriding that that pattern in your brain to say, hey, eat. Your body's telling you to eat and you you are saying no. So that idea that your body can tell you to eat but you can say no just because your body tells you to eat Absolutely. doesn't mean that you have to eat. And that was huge for me to be being able to control uh, my appetite and, and just reaffirm to myself that, hey, I can do this, I can dictate when I'm going to eat. So I think yeah. that in and of itself, that psychology is powerful Very as well. Powerful. Last one we're gonna jive on is the snake diet. So full transparency, this is the first time, like today is the first time I've heard about the snake diet. And I was doing a little bit of research earlier to try to wrap my head around exactly what it is. It's kind of intermittent fasting, but there's a little something else thrown in there with like a snake drink that's electrolytes and I don't know, have you have you heard of the snake yeah, diet? Yeah, so again, whenever I hear of a diet that's kind of, kind of catching on or I hear the term over and over, I, I do some research into it and it's basically an extended fast where the guy that kind of, the proprietor of it kind of created this, let's fast for a long time, and then we're gonna fast by taking snake juice, which again, is just a blend that he created. You know, he's not really charging anything snake for his snake juice. dives, but what, what he's done is basically kind of coined a term that's catchy. You hear it like okay. any other military diet, boiled egg diet, oh, what's that? And this, so the snake diet is basically just an extended fast, again, you know, as we as we saw in his videos, he kind of touts the reasons that it's working for these like magical benefits. Sure. You know, if you don't eat food, you are going to be in a huge caloric deficit for a long time of time, and then you're potentially going to change your associations with why I'm hungry. Is it cravings? Am I actually hungry? So you, you potentially could change your patterns and your your mental thinking, which can be a benefit as long as you understand why it's working mm -hmm. and, and don't make associations that are not true. Understanding why it's working is a perfect uh, conclusion to this video, guys. So. The four diets we just highlighted, again, this is not a hating video. This is not, these are wrong, you're stupid if you follow these. Not at all, there's individuals who follow these diets and they're great people and they see great results. No, understanding why they work and understanding that it may just be something that you try for a period of time, yeah. right? So, so what is your thought process on fad diets? You know, we've highlighted some things, sustainability. Yeah, so I think the big thing with any diet is that it gets you out of your normal routine. I think a lot of us that are entering any type of diet are looking for a change, we're looking for a solution. But as long as you go into each diet that you're trying, going, okay, what worked for me, what didn't work, you can find a sustainable approach because at the end of the day, it's all about your calorie intake and your energy output. If you're taking in so few calories that you can't move, that's not a good thing. If you're taking in so many calories that you put on body fat, that's probably not a good thing. So all of these methods can be wonderful and that's why they actually have merit because some people buy into it so much that they're able to do it for years. Right. But it doesn't mean that another person's approach is wrong. Mm -hmm. Find what works for you. Sometimes simply by trying one of these challenges or changing one of these things for, you know, we both have tried fasting and we both attempted these things and that's how I found the value in it was by attempting it. 
So we're not hating on these approaches. We're simply saying understanding why they work and finding what's sustainable is probably a much better solution than just, just pigeonholing one diet. I agree. And a, and a wish of mine almost is that with a lot of fad diets that are put out there is just this message as well that yes, this is going to work for you. It can work for you if you enjoy it, but also understand that this may not be the best for you. And if you shift away from doing this diet, you can still see fat loss and muscle gain results as well. Now, naturally with, you know, businesses needing to make money and, and specific marketing messages, the message to the person watching this thinking, if they're on the vegan diet or intermittent fasting or, you know, keto diet, and if I, oh, if I switch off of this, I, I can't switch off because then I'm gonna gain the fat again and lose any progress I made. No, take a deep breath, understand that you're following a method that has worked for you, but there are other method, methods that will work for you as well. So again, thank you, Paul, for Anytime. giving me your opinions here and sharing some of the science behind it. Again, Paul's channel right here, BrianCostaShredderForLife.com. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed, and if you're an OG, thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. Let's go.